Now, a message from the UN. Mm. World Same Podcast. How's your heads? How's your minds? How's your hearts? How's your anxiety? How's your standard poodle? How's your look at Denzel? Look at this. Look at Denzel. this fucking Denzel is just on here, just protecting us. Yeah, he look. He looks like he is guarding me right now because <laughs> Westby's here and he does not like Westby. Yeah, he does not like Westby. Holy shit! But um, we're out here. The Gem and Jam Music Festival installation. It's this week, right? It's this weekend, people. There's still time to grab your tickets if you're in the. Tucson area. And also, I've been looking at flights last minute lately. They're cheap. Fucking flights are cheap as shit right now. So if you're like kind of on the fence because you feel like, you know, flights might be a little expensive. Add to that. Even the flights directly to Tucson are cheap. Yeah. Which is an hour from Phoenix. So you should just fly to Tucson, stay at Tucson Airport Hotel. Bam. You're right there shuttling in. Boom, boom, boom. Go look at some gems. Yeah. And um, yeah, Tucson's awesome. Arizona's awesome. Um, great lineup. LPGOV, Disco be Biscuits, Us, uh, Tenth Mountain lettuce. Division, Lettuce. It's a big lineup. Who it's else? gonna be fun. I can't. Uh, oh, um, Daily Bread. Yeah, I think. Oh, of the trees. That's of the an, trees that's another too. Big he's headliner. popping. Yeah, he's popping hard. Hey Denzel, how you doing, buddy? Our guard dog protecting us. Um, we have round two with John Motherfucking Barber. I love this interview. He kind of like he gets he like kind of gets emotional in some parts talking yeah. about mm-hmm. his. Uh, his parents What's that? dying. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let you. Hear a lot it. of stuff happened to him in the last year. Yeah, and it's and been he's, good. He's becoming a human being, and he's also putting his <laughs> name in the hat for drummer of Goose. Yep, and <laughs> guitarist for Smashing Pumpkins. Oh. Remember, they're hiring. They hiring. They hiring. I want to go to the Smashing Pumpkins office in Chicago and go, y'all hiring. Y'all hiring. Hey, y'all hiring. Y'all hiring. <laughs> like a gas station. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, y'all hiring? Y'all hiring? Part-time? Part-time. So, grab your tickets to Gem and Jam. Um, I'm, this is going to be a short opening. Um, Don't worry. I'm on the interview, guys. You'll still get your... Yes. Thank you, everyone who came to the Ogden. That was, we sold it out. It's our biggest headline <laughs> to date. Wow, that was a great sit-in by me, huh? Yeah, you killed it. We had that 10-piece band sit-in. Yeah, it man. Was, everything went perfect. Everything went perfect. <laughs> wow, that was great on January tw- 26. 26. It was killer. I can't believe you sold it out. I know, right? 1,600 tickets. I'm that proud video of this band. That we made. I know. People love that we made that video at Don's, by the way. I know. That it's was so Denver, that making was th- that video at Don's. But that was the thing that like people were commenting on that the most. Yeah, and Montucky. I had a Montucky in my oh, hand. They're like, true. hell yeah. 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 He, hey, De- Frasco is Denver now. Affirmation. Okay. Over. Nothing's Denver. Denver doesn't have a thing. I feel like this is, it was. A, it really felt like a local show this weekend. It is. It's because where you it's where you live now. You're from. That's what local means. Uh, <laughs> I've never felt like I've had a home. This is the first time I've, mm. felt, I've, I've had. Not a home. even when you're like twelve. No. In your mom's in your parents' no. house with your. Special... I always felt like I was a guest. You don't feel like the place where you had a cum drawer was your home. No. That's okay. why I put it in the drawer. Yeah, fair enough. I want to put it all over everything else. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, we're on fire. Um, so um also dial it in gummies. Dial them in, baby. Dial it the fuck in I'm with our dick boys. Dick. Um, it was great to see them this weekend. Um yeah, they, they had the whole family out there for that. Yep. And um it was awesome. Oh man, I picked a booger and I put it in my mouth. It would taste like cocaine. Okay. You are Denver then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> that solves it. <laughs> That solves the mi- the mystery uh, the uh, mystery of is Andy Denver or not? I am. It's like, are you Denver? Do you go out at night and wake up with bad nasal right energy? Did you, you have the same conversation seventy five times did last you have, night in a bathroom in a yeah. weird bathroom? Right. <laughs> did you breathe in something over an open toilet <laughs> in a public restroom? Did you breathe in something well, over <laughs> an open? Toilet? Did you snort as hard as you could in a substance while standing over an open toilet in a public no. restroom? 
Denver, the most beautiful city in America. <laughs> it's enough buttons. All right, no more buttons. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, so grab yourself some today. dialed-in gummies. You'll love them. We love them. If you're in Colorado, if you're still in Colorado after our Red Rocks play, go grab her some, some and bring them on the airplane. <laughs> He loves you right now. I know he's the best. Isn't he like? He's like he's actually. Be... That's illegal. They'll be pissed to me if I said that. What? Don't bring dialed in gummies on the airplane. No, buy them when you get here. Buy them when you get here. Eat them. But if you're gonna fly out, with no, them, you can't do that, guys. That's illegal. I know, but I know TSA, and uh, you're fine. TSA is a fucking dog and pony show. At it's this a point. fucking dog and pony show. I always, whenever I go through TSA, I always look at the at what they're looking at, yeah. just to see. Yeah, yeah, like the x-ray thing? Yeah, I keep on yeah. testing. I put a little mushrooms in there, see if they see it. <laughs> put a loaded gun. Put a loaded gun. <laughs> it's okay, I'm white. <laughs> I'm a middle-aged white guy. I'm supposed to have a gun on me. <laughs> Not have a permit. I have this face and body. <laughs> and I'm from Indiana. Yeah, hey, look at it. You definitely... <laughs> it's like he has a gun in the book, If I Did It. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just reading an OJ book with my gun on me. No, you're weird. <laughs> Uh, too fucking funny. Uh, too fucking funny. Um, so, uh, grab yourself some dialed in gummies. And then if you want to watch this, uh, performance of John Barber really getting deep, stop watch, listening to it on mm-hmm. Apple podcast and head to volume.com. Yes. Volume.com. The best, um, the best in live stream mm-hmm. businesses. They live streamed our show at the Ogden as well. So if you want to oh, yeah. watch it. You could um, have them in there. Uh, you could watch the Ogden show, and all our episodes are stockpiled. But also, if you're a content creator and you're looking to get some content out there, why not put it on volume.com? It is the best program out there. I mean, sure. It does work really nugs. well. Cool. Everyone's on Nugs. Oh, no cool. Big you're deal. in a jam band. Cool. You're in a jam band. But they don't really do Be streaming on Nugs. On, that's just live shows, right? I know. Yeah. yeah. But there's no video. Good video. Good, a good staff rocking your shit. Head to volume.com. And we're, we're in the, we've been, ta- we've been having meetings, meetings of the minds. They're obsessed the, with us. They're obsessed with us. Um, they're fucking obsessed they're with fucking us. Fucking obsessed with us. Especially Andy. Oh man, we had a great time. I went to the company party last weekend and, uh, they're sh- magic tricks and they're I like, know. I can't believe you went. Like, they're all like astonished that I showed up to the company party. I'm like, you guys are my boys. Why wouldn't I not go? I'm part I have of the literally company. literally nothing going on in my personal yeah, life, guys. I do not want to be in Denver <laughs> on a Friday so I could just have bad nostrils for the, the whole yeah. weekend. I rather, I love close up magic. I love that. I love just being in nice hotels. It put me up in a nice hotel. I love nice they hotels. They really treated me like real fucking royalty. It was really cool. I like nice hotels better than my home. I like, oh my I, God. Yeah. The, me too. If I could live in a hotel, I would. I would too. Yeah. I always think about that. Um, Royal Tannenbaums, mm. where Bill Murray was like living in a hotel. That's my dream life, basically. It is mine just too. Just be an old, lonely man in a hotel. Yeah, with dope pajamas. Just OJ book, weed, yeah, just, just fucking just OJ serial book. killer books. Just, just, and you're just by yourself on the on the terrace, just smoking a cigarette. Oh yeah. Judging the people who just show up yeah. for two I days. I want to be one of those old peasants. guys. I definitely want to just be like a total fucking loser when I'm old. I want people to feel really bad for me, but I'm happy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so head to volume.com. Shout out to volume.com too for uh, yeah hosting us. Um, you really make us feel like uh, we're part of the team and not yeah. just a commodity. And it really means a yeah. lot. Is but that the right word? Commodity? I'd like to feel like a commodity a little bit too, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so next time we do the company part, please bring Nick. He wants his own room as I'll well. I'll do trivia at it. That's a great idea. They already dude, have a magician. Constantine, or the guy who edits. Our, Connie. I know Connie. Connie's we the email. fucking man, dude. Oh, really? Dude, the whole crew is dope. I worked with Constantine on all those breakouts. Yeah, Constantine's tour. the man. He, he's actually a great fucking magician. He was the magician? Yes. Oh, with I didn't know neck. that. That's Constantine. I, okay, now I see it, but that's so random. And he's from LA. I'm like, fuck, dude. The I most, should hang out with him. The more. most random guys are magicians. Yeah. Manic focus. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's someone else too. It's so such a yeah. weird hobby to pick They up. also volume this is a cool thing about volume two. They they bought they gave them they gave them a budget to make a musical. And Constantine made a musical with the other homie there. I think Merlino. We definitely need more money then. If they're just paying for <laughs> musicals. <laughs> Cough it up, volume. I know, Let's you, go. <laughs> I know you got money for a trivia show. I know you got money for a trivia show. I'm doing numbers out here at Yacht Club. Y'all better trick it out. Just kidding. We're grateful. Um, yeah, I love them. Okay. Uh, John Barber, are you ready for it? Round two. This yeah, I'm was, ready for it. Everyone is yeah. obsessed 
with the John Barber interview last year, and we tried to do things that we didn't do from the last episode. I don't think we really did. No, we did. It was just an open conversation. He's the best. You know, he'll talk shit. He'll talk shit about Brownie, and you know, he's a rich well of information too. Yeah, and he's smart. We were talking about it. We were, we were talking about everything. He's pretty cool for a guy from New Jersey. <laughs> I thought he's from Philly. No, well, he went there for college. He's Jersey guy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Shout out to Jersey. I think he is. I, I hope he gets like one of those like gold gold faces, like like really? the Jersey Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. John Barber. <laughs> what is his last name? Goodwin. Albert Einstein. John Barber. <laughs> uh, Albert Einstein's not from New Jersey, but he did teach at Princeton for a long yeah. time. So, all right, guys, enjoy the episode and yeah. um, enjoy Jam and Jam. I'll see you guys out there. I'm there all weekend. We're gonna mm. hang out. Oh, Matty O'Neill's there too. Madeline. Madeline. And um, yeah, and enjoy uh, John Barber. This is great. Um, hey, Chris, play some Disco Biscuits. If you don't know who John Barber is, play Orc um, theme, please. Play Orc theme for me. Thank orc you. Orc theme. That's one of their songs. Oh, I like. cool. I mean, they're kind of, they're on a, they're on a roll right now. This is I went to their show this year, and this is the best they've ever sounded. Cosby used to open for them all the time, actually. Yeah, back this when is, they I think openers. they're they're fucking they're dialing it in again, and mm-hmm. it's cool. Um, yeah, enjoy Cosby. John. It sounds like I'd sing Bill Cosby. Yeah. my old band Cosby Sweater used to open yeah. for them all the time. Not yeah. Bill Cosby. The his you old band, Cosby Sweater, was a uh, uh, Disco Biscuits cover band. We did do one cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Enjoy, John, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bless it's your It's just going to be uh, me and Nick, and we got some special guests. But we're right. not going to tell you who. No, this is going to be a surprise. It's a very good guitarist. It's a very good guitarist and a guy who loves the lion. <laughs> all right, guys. Bye. <laughs> all right. There we are. Wow. All right. Round two. Well, of welcome the tell-all. back. Round yes. two of the tell-all. Now Can't we John believe Barber. it. Now we know each other, and uh, we had a fact checker on the last interview, Mr. Barber. Oh, yeah. We did. <laughs> yes. We're not going to um, name any names. The World Saving Podcast fact checker is Mark Brownstein. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> We're not going to name any names. Mark Brownstein. Mark of- Brownstein um, told us that... He said you lied the you're, whole time. You're lying about being a rich kid. <laughs> When did I say I was a rich kid? No, you said you weren't a rich kid. He says you were a rich kid. Ooh. What? What are you talking about? That's crazy. That's crazy. Are we going to have to cut out the first three minutes of the podcast? (laughs) (laughs) I'm a rich kid now, but it's not because my parents gave me any money. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You, be a but honestly, so Barbara, you do look richer. Yeah, I do like your face is glowing. I feel like you're like you're taking care of yourself. You do you're look, right you're looking tan. Like, did you just go, come back? Did you buy some Bitcoin in Puerto Rico? What's going on with your life right now? Honestly, I, 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 I just, the, I, the, let me just say, I'm going to drop the ultimate thing on you right now to start right. this off. All right. I know we're going to talk for five hours. I probably should wait three hours before I drop this. But I'm just going to start here. <laughs> I have invented the greatest fitness routine known to man. What? And it's working. It is working. Look at dude, that. Your look skin at my looks good. Body. I mean, you look do at look shit. hot. Look at that. Holy shit, up. you got muscles, dude. I know. It's the Drop best the routine, thing ever. Bro. What is it? All right, Drop so, it. So Drop this it. is what you do is you get on the exercise bike and I'm you out. pick up the controller to the Zelda unit, oh, okay. right? <laughs> and then you put a big screen TV on the other side of the room, as big as Target will sell you. Yeah. And you put the Zelda into the big screen TV, and then you sit on the bike, st- pedal in, grab the controller, and you play the entire <laughs> game of Zelda. Holy shit, what's going on? Who are you? Play you? The- you play the whole game of Zelda, which is like a 70 million hour experience yeah, exactly. while you're pedaling. <laughs> twitch this thing. Yeah. Why don't you twitch it? I was it? thinking about it. I was thinking about it. I don't know. It's you just like, to, I don't know. I think I got to like Google heavy, how to do that. You're heavy breathing while, while they're on Twitch. <laughs> it's like the mic trap by your face. You're like halfway through a workout. Like, oh, I got to go, Rupee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <you're> like, <laughs> I mean, that's Thanks AMSR, for you know? Yeah. They're asking questions about the biscuits. Yeah, fuck Brownstein. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yo, they're like, know. they're probably in the comments like, this dude, this dude is fat and the worst Zelda player I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how you doing, Barbara? I'm good, man. How you are you feeling guys good? doing? Feeling happy? You, you have been doing some shows, dude. I, you, nobody tours like you, man. You tour like Garcia used to tour. Dude. It's crazy. Do you, I mean, you guys used to do that too. I'm just a little bit we younger. We did. 
We we never toured as much as you did though because we would kill each other after we had yeah. an uh, eleven week hard limit on every tour. <laughs> So, that's pretty long. Though. That's pretty long. That was, and we only did that long. once or twice, and I think we sh- took gunshots at each other. At yeah, the what was the worst tour. one? What was the worst one? What, like, give me, like, after 11 week, what happened? <laughs> oh, the band broke up. The <laughs> tour ended because the band broke up. We canceled, like, the last two weeks of shows. <laughs> uh, I think Mark got out of the RV in the middle of the street in Richmond. We were, dry, we were touring in an RV back then. He got out of the RV in Richmond because he didn't like Steely Dan. Which is like now a thing on well, TikTok wrong, or whatever. Right now a thing. He, inv- he invented that TikTok thing. The, the, oh. I hate Steely Dan or I love Steely Dan or whatever the I thing is that's going on. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's how crazy tour gets after a while. <laughs> that's how crazy tour gets. Because that was connected to something else, connected to something else, connected to something else, which after 11 weeks over spills over. I know the of top. another band where the light guy and the sound guy, one of them got fired because they got in a fist fight over. Who's better between the fish and Grateful Dead? Oh God! I'm not gonna say what works the bandit is. You know what I mean? <laughs> what bandit is the works? You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good argument, though. I've been in that argument before. That's at least a good argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what well, side are you it? on in What's, that argument? Me. I I like Fish's music more. Actually, I'd rather go to a Fish show. But I think the Grateful Dead is a more important band. Does that make sense? All right. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. That's yeah. what's your take? That's wonderful, Mister Jam Band. I, I don't. I don't think you can mess with the Dead's. Uh, I saw Jerry play, so that's different. Yeah, yeah. So I know what happens when Jerry was ripping into a solo. I mean, uh, both of the guitar players are the best ever. So it's hard to say mm-hmm. one's better than the other. Yeah. Uh, but the Grateful Dead songbook is crazy, and also. Yeah, you're right. I yeah, was seeing insane. the Grateful Dead at like giant stadium. You know, it was yeah. it wasn't yeah, yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. different experience. It was this thing in the eighties that they don't. Then you know, I, I've never seen Fish do it. I've seen Trey do it with the Dead, but I've never yeah. seen Fish do that on that level. I guess they they obviously have, but I wasn't at any of those shows. Great, I would Wedding definitely feel differently probably if I saw them with Jerry Garcia. Yeah, it's, with Jerry was crazy. Like Jerry would just yeah. mow you over. He, the, there's one time. That I had taken acid at a MSG fish or an MSG uh, Grateful Dead show, and I had taken acid, and I was young, and I went to get a cone of ice cream, and uh, I came. Apparently, don't eat ice cream, you know, when you're tripping, and um, and I it got my ice cream, walked back into the room. You could feel it like in your jaw, like about to start. And Jerry's Candyman solo was so good while I was eating the ice cream that I was like bone sober at the end of it. And then I was just like, what happened? Like, I got tranced. I got taken away and then put right back in my spot, ready to go home. How old are you? I think you? my parents were picking me up outside. <laughs> How old um, you? I don't know. I was, I was probably 17, 16, 17. Do you remember when Jerry died? Like, Yes. Where were you? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I think we were just in Philly in the summertime. And uh, I don't really remember what I did when Jerry died, honestly. I, I think we like jammed. We played, we got together and jammed. He died or what year did he die? Yeah, I think it was 95, like August, August or something. I could be confusing that with his birthday. Though. Like, were you I, sad? No, no, because his birthday and his death day are like a week apart. I think they're both in August. Yeah. Honestly, I was like 16 or 17 when Stevie Ray Vaughan died. Mm. Oh, and, fuck. That probably hit you um, hard. And I almost, I was on a football team and I got in a big fight with the coach because he was like, you got to go to practice. And I was like, I'm not going to practice. Stevie Ray Vaughan died today. <laughs> and he was like, you got to go to practice, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm not going to practice. He goes, well, then I'm going to kick you off the team. We did. We had that whole argument. Really? And I was like, fuck, f- fuck you, man. Stevie Ray Vaughn died today. Do you have any idea what that means? Like, no. And um, yeah, and he could have cared less, <laughs> yeah. dude. The last thing he wants. And I didn't get that much playing time with that coach. And I wonder why, you know, I never. <laughs> Hold on, were you taking acid and playing on the football field? No, 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 that no. That, that would be, be it. You, you would never do it. You would never, you would run out on the, or you would yeah. be incredible. You would be. <laughs> Who's that pitcher? You know, Who's Doc that pitcher? Ellis. Doc Ellis. <laughs> On the pirate. Trivia machine. Trivia machine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I answered it before you were like even. <laughs> well, like, I mean, it? I, what's the I played a pool tournament at Penn um, and took acid and just killed everybody. It really? was crazy. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was like coming out of a movie or something. I was hitting like. 
double once backs across the table. <laughs> no yeah. middle, there's no Mike linebacker in billiards, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. That's going to blow your knee out. Yeah. But, yeah. but, you know, I think he's on to something there. I think individual sports are good for acid. Like I think oh, like sure. swimming would probably be a great sport for acid. Golf. Golf. I'm surprised golfers aren't doing it all the time. Cornhole. Do you ever uh, like? Do you ever like <laughs> take acid? All the time. Yeah, cornhole. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There it is, John Barber, John ninth Barber. hole of the cornhole championship. <laughs> What'd be the worst? He's on that? staring at a wall. <laughs> he's right now. he's hit 170 in a row. We don't <laughs> yeah, know what's yeah. going we on. We don't know here. what happened, but John Barber's on. He's about to hit the world record in cornball history. Uh, <laughs> you ever take acid at a concert and forget that you're actually in a band? <laughs> just like, just forget uh, yes. that you're like in a group setting and you're just fucking just shredding too much. Or just like, there was a show where we played after Dark Star Orchestra, and um, and they had said some really nice things to us, and I think they blew up our ego a little bit, and we took a little <laughs> bit too much acid. And I went out on stage and I played just with the ride cymbal for the entire set. And I went back because and the ride cymbal was like all over the place. It's not a good like play with the kick drum, play with the snare. Yeah, 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 Don't yeah. play with the ride cymbal. I went back and cymbal. listened to it and it was just like craziness. It was total insanity. Oh my god. Like what in your what were you thinking then? Like this is dope? I just forgot. I forgot <laughs> that there was a thing going on. I was just like so entranced with what I was doing and the little nuances around the ride symbol and how like that ding made my ding, la, la, la. and like literally I forgot and like half an hour went by. A half an hour? I, it was really long. I, I went back and listened to it. I was just like, oh my God. That's, that's yeah. I love Oh my God. God. We have that's also insane. some breaking news. No um, I heard yeah, what's another up? fact check, World Saving Podcast. Um, thing is actually a source we won't tell but i heard you put your name in the hat for being the drummer of goose <laughs> <laughs> dude i love playing the drums i would definitely take that job um you know i don't i don't know what to do about those guys i, don't know I what, want Pete, i want peter's job yeah, I, about, I don't know. Like, who what if Brown sells Steve? out Hampton Coliseum and then cans the drummer the next day? I, I don't understand what what's going on over there. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think's going uh, on? Going, what do you think's going on? I have no idea. <laughs> I know. I heard, and this has got to be. This would be the coolest thing, but I, there's no way those guys did this. But I heard. I don't know. I heard that there was a lot of inner. There was a lot of partner sharing amongst the band members. Oh, I think and, this is what I heard too. I think that's a rumor. Uh, though. Who knows? Yeah. But I don't think any of that's true. I no. think that they just didn't get along. Yeah. And um, I don't know. How hard I mean, is it? it it's got to be hard to so be in a band that, that blows up that quickly, right? They've been around for like 10 years. Oh, yeah, quickly. What oh, are you yeah, talking about? This guy's been around forever. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the hard part is, is like, okay. This is an unpopular thing to say. I know. I, I'm a guitar player. We say the wrong thing all the time. Yeah. Let me just tell you how, as far as drummers go, how bad could he have possibly been? Did he drive a motorcycle into the lobby of a hotel? Yeah, did yeah. he? Yeah. Did he like disappear on a on an alcohol binge for, and and then they found him at some castle in Leeds like no. six <laughs> months later, like, like how bad in the scope of drummers, just 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 the, the yeah. small group that they are, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like eh, the drummers, they're just like they have they're a special breed, and no, you can't do their job, you they're know special. what I mean. <laughs> I just I'm I'm visualizing the next time Barbara quits the biscuits is to be the drummer of Goose. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, Dude, I think I would Brownsie take their would music. You. I think Brownsie would literally poison your drink. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know. It would, okay. I don't know. I think I would take their music in a direction that their fan base doesn't want to go just in. Just ride you know them all the whole time for half an hour. <laughs> 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 It's called a callback, people. Oh, let's go. I good. wonder how long it would be till they fired me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how many days? That would be. I should make a, a, a YouTube channel about how long can I stay in Goose Bruce and just keep you in there for at least a couple of weeks. Day twenty-five. I'm still in Goose. <laughs> they haven't noticed I don't own a drum set yet. 
<laughs> I've been I just opened the bays of the bus right before it left, and their luggage scattered up, all over I-95. I've been upgraded to first class three times. <laughs> There's Barber at the local coffee shop making another uh, programming yeah. <laughs> website. Yeah. Can I open with Baba Man. G? <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, you've been busy. I've been seeing you doing the the the, the musical again. What what's the new musical this year? I did a musical in May. It's called The Very Moon. It's an ad- adaptation of the Hot Air Balloon, so it's different. We wrote 16 new songs for it. We changed the plot. We changed the characters. We made, you know, how do you have uh, time for it's it's funny, it's hold on, hilarious. hold on, Barbara. How do you have time for all this? By the way, that's the most uh, serious he's been so far. He's <laughs> talking about a jam band musical. <laughs> <laughs> I know, seriously. I read the, I, I, I was really hopped onto the party line for that one right there. <laughs> no, but it seems like, I mean, from the clips I've been seeing from Magner and you, it seems like it's fucking, it, it takes a lot of work and effort. Oh my God. Everything takes a lot of work. I, I don't even know what to tell you. I mean, it's a, the, the life takes work. There's nothing new, no way around it. The, uh, I don't know. We, we, I don't even know why we did a musical, honestly. I just, it was during the pandemic. It was just something to do that was interesting. I watched a lot of Disney Plus with my kids, so I was like, "It'd be inter- you know, why can't I put something on Disney Plus? I don't understand." Right. So, so that's basically, you know, what are we going to do with this? I don't know. We're just having fun with it. We're making music. We're having fun. Like, what else is there to do, really, in this line of work? You know? Right. Maybe we forget that that music is just supposed to be fucking fun. We take it so goddamn seriously sometimes. Like, why can't we just have fun in life? Yeah, somebody came up to me and they're like, aren't you worried you're going to ruin your career? And I was like, what career are you talking about, dude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in the disco like, biscuits. <laughs> like, I am like, in the disco like, biscuits. <laughs> yeah. Like, do, do you think I'm the drummer of Goose? Like, yeah. what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I've quit this band four times now. <laughs> yeah. What I'm trying think? to get kicked out of this damn band. I guess, this is my yeah. new plan. <laughs> we literally quit when we're at our most successful. <laughs> I, but yeah. I'm telling you right now, there's a fucking big buzz for the biscuits. Everyone yeah. says you guys are sounding the best you've ever sounded. True. So what's I, going I on? Agree. What, what do you? So what's happening? Like what? What's the chemistry? What's going on? You guys like each other again or what? You know, we've we've been getting along. We're a little too old to be at each other's throats all the time, and that's a good thing. Um, we've been working really hard on the band, and I think that everybody in the band's been really trying to find their role in the organization and then do their job really well. And everybody in the organization has found a really nice role that they like. And now everybody's starting to like, things are happening in the Disco Biscuit organization that have never happened. Like we're all writing together in the same room. Uh, We're making song after song. We're just, we're working in a really positive mindset. We're touring well together. I don't know. Everything's been good. We fixed a couple of little things about the org. That was that was causing some issues, and I think those little like if you get rid of big problems, things smooth sailing becomes an option, yeah, yeah. and I think that's where where we're at. Like, what we were those a, big problems? The biggest one was summer camp, and I don't know why we didn't figure this out for twenty years, but summer camp this past year to Chicago, uh, Ian Goldberg's last summer camp. Love Ian, yeah. um, great promoter, great Thank Chicago you. promoter. And put us on this incredible stage in Chicago. We hadn't played in Chicago too much, and it was great to be out there with those kids. And we really wanted to impress them. Um, we played the night before. We played great. The next night, we he gave us a nice little place to hang out. I had my Peloton Zelda thing. I was playing <laughs> Zelda backstage. And I, everyone was all relaxed and having fun. And we played the whole set before we went on stage and played the whole set. And... This was a paradigm shift for our band because we play a totally different show with totally different transitions that are sometimes cockamamie every single set, every single show. Right. And so now we do the entire show before we do the show again. We do it backstage. So now we don't have to individually figure out what to practice and we don't have to stress out about, did we do this? Did we do that? You actually just do everything. And we do really short jams or no jams at all because you don't want to ruin the freshness of the jam. 
So we do this, we do, basically we start that we play set one real tight, then we play set two real tight, the encore real tight, and then we take a break for dinner, where before what we used to do was hang out, talk about the show, talk about the set list, and work on the little, what we thought were the trouble points in there, and then we get on stage and find out we missed a bunch of them. You know, right. like, oh, we haven't done that song and we actually forgot the ending. Like, right. it's, it's, it's no big deal. The ending's easy, but running it for the first time on stage in front of thousands of people just causes chaos. Right. But if you run it backstage when, once, you get a chance to make your mistake there. And then when you go out on stage, the amount of mistakes you make reduces greatly. And we're making like a couple of mistakes a show instead of like a litany of mistakes every show. And when you do what we do... Uh, that is a huge difference because people like that level of perfection in their music. So mm -hmm. I feel like that has been the number one biggest change for the band, for sure. So you you mean you're, you're just caring more? <laughs> so you're trying. Yeah, yeah we're what? giving a shit more. Do you have any, any also, idea how, how many hours a Disco Biscuit show is for a day? <laughs> like, there's DJs making 10 times the money that I'm making, and they go out and they press play for 90 minutes, maybe even 60 yeah. I know. minutes. And all they do is sit on the plane on the way there and pick the 16 songs they want to play. The 12 American of them team. are Avicii still. You know, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, <laughs> that's it. We're playing a totally different show that we have to play twice every day. The show's three and a half hours long. The, fir the first playthrough takes two hours. So right. it's five and a half hours of I'm playing guitar, Plus, I got to do all the warm-ups, vocal practice, all the other things that we got to do before a show. So a Disco Whiskey show is like a 12, 13-hour day. It's like we're shooting a movie with Tom Hanks or something. You know what I mean? It's, well, a, it's maybe, a full day. Maybe that's why you guys are getting along with each other, because you're actually communicating with each other and hanging out. Yeah, yeah we got to sit like, down and play. And, and it's so musical. It's less yeah. about us uh, give, having opinions about each other and more about us just like getting our job done for the day. And that is and it's just so much better it's crazy i can't oh believe it think about it i'm gonna it. cry this is like maturing what about uh um, let's <laughs> fucking go barber i have a question thank about you your, thank you. you you also recently hired my former roommate as your new lighting director alex herm schneider has that has that affected your playing on stage having a new light guy <laughs> he's the best though huh? <laughs> uh i i you know i saw the pictures from the new years and uh i was just every picture made me cry every picture he's the man He's so good at his job, and it's beautiful. And, I love um, it. I, I don't know. We're very lucky he's available. Barbara, I love seeing you happy, bro. You seem happy. You feel? You, do you feel content with your life? You know, I've I I I have uh, I've had it. Like 2023 was a really really tough year for me. What happened? Uh, I lost my I lost my father in 2023. Oh fuck, dude! I didn't and, know that. Um, and and we had this like weird, we were never that emotional together. And he called me up and we had this weird emotional phone call. And I hung up the phone and was like, oh my God, that might be the last time I ever talked to him. And then it was the last time I ever talked to him. What was, can you go into what was the conversation about? Uh, he called me up and asked me some like questions about how I was doing, which he never did. <laughs> and then he asked me to uh, like look after some stuff for my brother and look after some stuff for my mom. Was he sick already? And yeah, yeah. He so was you sick. knew he, he was like, okay, okay, he was, yeah. you, this was like not a random, like, hey, I'm dying. You knew he was kind of. Well, look, I'm not a doctor, okay? Mm -hmm. I just want to be sure that you know that. I do a lot of multitasking, but I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. However, yeah, yeah. however, I have seen... So many people's parents have trouble because the first time they went to the doctor was l last summer and the pandemic, nobody went to the doctor. So it was like 2019, they got a checkup and then 2023, they got a checkup. But what was happening in 2021, 22, and this is what happened to my dad, is things were getting bad and they just didn't know it because they didn't go and see anybody and they wow. didn't get any of the million tests that you can get nowadays. So... What happened with my dad was in June, he had a lump. In late June, they removed the lump. It would never heal. Right was the here. lump? Okay. Oh, right under his arm. For those of you listening, I'm padding below my armpit. So it was like from deodorant or something like that, right? But it was like a golf ball sized lump. The fact that he didn't notice it till June, I'm like, what? 
what kind of self check are you doing, Fred? Come yeah. on, buddy. Yeah. You know, so so they removed it, and then it was bleeding, and it would ne- it never healed. Like it, so the, so the, his his whole summer, I just felt so bad for him. My mom had to bandage him every day. They kept doing more tests, right? And so the first time they do a test, that you got to wait two weeks, three weeks for the test to come back. It's benign. Now we're middle of July. He's still bleeding every day. So they're like, why don't you come back in? We'll take another sample. We'll try and sew you up. So that's what happens in July. They take another sample. Then he comes back in in August and they're like, oh, it's stage one cancer. We're sorry. It's it's, it's in your lymph nodes or something. And then they, they go, oh, let's take some te- biopsies from the rest of your body. Then they're like, oh, it's stage four three cancer and this is really bad and it's stage four cancer two weeks later and now it's late september and then and then he passed away and it was like literally like every time he went to the doctor and every time he went to the doctor they told him something that was dramatically wrong three weeks later like he would go back first they said it was benign then three weeks later they're like you have cancer like that's the worst yeah 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 set of diagnoses ever now, I'm not a doctor, but I think I could have done a better job. Three weeks after that, they're like, oh, it's stage three cancer. Three weeks after that, they're like, it's stage four cancer. You better call your family. Like, So they, they, it was just like these doctors just like never figured out what was going wrong. And they kept telling him something that was in, entirely incorrect at the time and two weeks later when they told him the next piece of news. So it was an awful thing. And the whole time he's waking up every morning covered in blood, cleaning himself up, covering himself in bandages. Next day, s- slept on it, didn't heal every single day for like 150 days. And I was just like, so. Oof. I were you even close talking with about it is so brutal. Were you close to him? I mean,. I, we were kind of close. He was he was a loner like me in a weird way, yeah. and and so we were as close as loners could be, I think. And um, I don't know. He was he was a really good guy. He was a great person. He spent his whole life making sure that I had a good life. You know, yeah. he, he 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 was a great person. But uh, that that's a tough way to go out. I would just recommend that everybody. Get checked out. Go to the damn doctor and get checked up now. Because if you didn't go during the pandemic, you don't know what happened during the pandemic. How, how's your health? I mean, I think it's good. I, I get on the Peloton every day for a long time. I uh, I, I I beat cholesterol in 2023. And go. I beat diabetes in 2023. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Let's fucking go, Barbara. <laughs> I beat both of those things. My doctor was like freaking out. She's like, in another month, you're going to be a diabetic and your cholesterol is so high, you could have a heart attack tomorrow. You better get your life insurance. And I was like, oh my God, you're kidding me. So, but if you just bike every day, all those things go away. Yeah. I think you just got to sweat, right? Yeah. Sweat and maybe drink less. You know what I mean? Sweat and drink less. Eat a little better. How's your drinking intake lately? It's been great. I mean, over I had a nice little holiday season where I drank a little bit, but I'm kind of over it. I love pot gummies, dude. Pot gummies have saved my whole life. Why? Tell it's me. incredible. It, okay, so what's wrong with pot? Can we talk about? I have I have guys in my band smoke club weed. I'm not talking about them right now, but people come over with the weed and the little the little filter sticks and the paper and the crumples this and the crumples that and the lighter and all this bullshit so they can roll a joint up and then have ash and and the light and the match and all this it's just like this it's just like 1978 disaster in like multiple places in your house so these people can get high (laughs) and then and now they come over with like a glass like erector set with a bulb and another bulb and they have a butane lighter and a a crap and a harnesser and a charger and yeah it's like pot crap (laughs) yeah i'm like i'm like i have an alley around back you can go do it out there if you want to so it's insane what people do to smoke weed and then you know, it's all this, uh, it's all the mess and the cleanup. They leave the studio and I get to do all the cleanup, right? right? So let me tell you, the gummy, there's no cleanup. There's nothing. There's nothing. You eat the gummy. It's just like done, done. It's delicious. I'm, you know, maybe I have to wait 20 minutes to get high, but 
at least I don't have to spend 20 minutes like at the butane store, like figuring out <laughs> which kind of holistic butane I'm going to shoot into my face today. Uh, you know, it just doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a, I'm, I'm glad you're, uh, yeah, because I, I quit smoking cigarettes. Wow. And, yeah. That's after a big 12 one. years, yeah. I can't believe it. And, you know, I've been, I've been on these Zins, but now I'm like, I love how convenient a Zin is. I'll just like wake up from bed and just pop a Zin and then go back to bed. Yeah, well, I mean, you might as well be addicted to Zin. Then, like, you don't smell like cigarettes anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the I, only problem with I can. Don't what is Zin? I don't even know what that is. It's a nicotine is. patch, so it's no tobacco. So I can try that. But the problem is, that. though, it's a lot of sodium. So that's the only thing wrong. It can't be that. <laughs> so is Korean barbecue. You don't see anybody oh, slowing yeah, down on yeah, that Shout shit. out to Korean barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> but, Barb, I want to go back to your phone call with your dad, because this is really important. Uh, we just like kind of okay. skipped over to here. What What was the conversation like by the end of it? Was he saying he's proud of you? Did he say he was dying? Like, What was that like? You didn't said it say he was intent. dying. Didn't talk about what the doctor told him. Didn't talk, tell me what the doctor said last time. So, it, so he was stage one cancer is the last thing that he told me. But that and was he four lied weeks. to me. That was four. Yeah, weeks. he lied to me about the rest of it. He he didn't he, he he didn't tell me and he didn't tell anyone. He he just didn't want anybody to be concerned about him. You know, he didn't want anyone to burn any cycles on him. Which is crazy. That's but, wild. Uh, Norm Macdonald. Yeah. Yeah, Norm Macdonald did that. Would yeah, you do that? Yeah, it was that? like a Norm Macdonald situation. You Would know? that be you too? You're a loner. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. I, I find myself saying things all the time that he used to say to me. I'm just like, and, and I used to be like mad at myself, like, don't become your father and la, la, la. I used to say that to myself. And now I'm like, ah, there it is. There's a little Fred in there right there. No big deal. So you got out of the, did he say he loved you? No, uh, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. But he did say he was proud of me. Um, and then when I went to look through all of his stuff, I found like all the, the playbill from the Very Moon musical. And I found posters from some of the shows I had done. And oh, nice. I didn't know he was, I found news clippings, all sorts of stuff that I had no idea. I thought he kind of hated my job. And I thought he kind of like didn't, you know what I mean? I yeah. never got the... I never got the approval from him directly. I got it from him kind of posthumously when I saw what he was kind of stacking in, you know. That's why I was like kind of asking about this. Like, it, it feels like the resentment of the past, like, could not make you want to have that closure when that time's come. Cause did you feel like it was like the last, you said like you felt like it was like the last time you're going to talk to him? Yeah, it, it almost felt like he was going to cry on the phone call. It was yeah. very emotionally charged, and he didn't say anything. It was like this. It was. It was like. Uh, have you seen Salt Burn yet? You know how they're no, like. I, I gotta heard see it. it. Yeah, uh, I heard it's awesome. Uh, crazy scene in there with like you know they're old British people and they just like they tr they pretend that nothing affects them. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and he was Nick, like kind of like Gerlock right here, dude. That's Nick. Are you like that, Nick? Oh, is that God. your thing? I'm also British as hell. Oh God, he is like Are that you? to a ten thousand degree. I'm not pretending. So, Barbara, this is safe. <laughs> when I when I All ask right. you this, I want you to be real honest. I will. Were you a little salty that Trey got flowers for Game Heads this year when you've been making your third? This is your third musical. We're like, fuck Dude, this guy. we we did hot air balloon on on, on New Year's 2018. Ooh. We did the same thing they did Ooh. this year. There we go. Five Ooh. years ago. See, that's the shit I'm talking about. That's a world Shots saving fired. exclusive. Shots fired. Dude, we on Trey we world. debuted hot air balloon on a New Year's oh. at a New Year's show. Why are people losing their Damn. goddamn mime over Game Hedge? I don't I don't I don't know enough about fish <sighs> knowledge. Kind of cool. What is it? I mean, they have a huge audience. They're they're from the era of huge audiences. Like none of us are from that era. Yeah. They're from the yeah. era of pre Napster record labels. You know, like marketing budgets, CDs. Like the you know, music business, you could get to a different critical mass in those more. years that nobody gets to that critical mass anymore. Besides Drake, really, or Taylor Swift. Yeah. I mean, you don't see it. Like who are the, the big bands now? Are still. If you look at the big bands now, a lot of them were were big back then. Yeah. Fish, Coldplay, U two, you know, Foo Fighters. Like you're seeing a lot of that. The 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 world has fractured, as they say. Mm -hmm. You know, Do you and think you really you really need a big marketing budget to get out of things. 
Uh, right. I know Taylor Swift's dad owned the record company she was on, so I'm sure she got a good Ooh. one. Uh, Drake is the best oh. rapper ever. So what are you gonna do? But uh, you love Drake, you know? Like I love Drake. I think he's fucking good. I, I don't listen to him very much, but every time I hear him, I'm like, wow, yeah, that was good. Yeah. That was good. You know, he's got a couple of raps where you're like, oh wow, that's good. That's really good. What it's about, like undeniable. What about when a, a band loses a, a band member and uh, when they're really big? And uh, <laughs> like who? <laughs> like Goose? Like I? I think about Goose. Like is that gonna fuck them up? Do they don't have original drummer, or does no one care? It depends. We'll see. Depends well, I guess that that's that's drummer. what twenty twenty four will see. You know, yeah. if people care or not, who are they gonna replace them with? You know, that's the big question. By the John Barber. You know? Speaking of new, members. I know you're lying about this. I talked to Baruch. He said you put your name in the hat. Speaking of new band, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Baruch's job, Baruch's, Bruce out there trying to mix it up. He's trying to get, you know. But the Smashing He's, Pumpkins are doing open auditions for their new guitarist position. Did you see that? Really? Anyone can apply. So if you're looking for another gig, Barber, there you go. Honestly, I love the Smashing Pumpkins when I was a kid. So I would take that gig. I don't know if uh, if I'm like cool enough looking physically to do that job. You know what no, I mean? you got like a 10,000 mile stare. I mean, you could be perfect in that band. Have like, you seen Billy Yeah. yeah you're fine. I, I mean, I saw, I you're saw way Billy hotter Corgan. than Billy. Yeah. You're way hotter yeah. than Billy Corgan. He looks like Corgan. Voldemort. <laughs> he does look like Voldemort. <laughs> he does. He does. <laughs> but he does have like a really well-shaped skull as far as a guy who shaves his head. Like, yeah. it's very round. If you could be in any band, what band would you be in? Oh, it's a great question. Uh, if, when I was a kid, I, the answer was definitely Chili Peppers before like oh, yeah. the pop Chili Peppers back in the funk Chili Peppers, oh, like good. through blood, sugar, sex, magic, Chili Peppers. Um, you know, uh, there, there was a time where I thought I could probably fill in for Trey and fish if I needed to. Ooh. I think I was 17 ah. when I thought that, ah. but you know, I could rip all the big ones so I could do that. I could definitely Guide be in back. the Grateful Dead. Ooh. Um, but I think I'm like too close to the jam bands. I think if I really wanted to be in a band, I would want to be in like a like a real like different kind of musical experience. Like I would want to be in BTS. Nice. You know what I mean? I would want to be the white guy in BTS. <laughs> Hold on, is that that Asian yeah. group? <laughs> yeah, K-pop. K-pop? K-pop? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would learn the dance moves and like get my hair <laughs> slicked all tight and. But you're the same. You know what I mean? Now. Get my freckles bleached off my face and just do something like that. You know, a lot of powder. Everybody in the band, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously, like <laughs> they're all a hundred pounds, a yeah. hundred pounds heavier than everybody in the band. <laughs> I they, went to college in the nineties. <laughs> they, they they do the national anthem. They keep panning left, and the last one's John Barber. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, remember the Kenneth Star report? <laughs> uh. I mean, look, if if NSYNC went back on tour and Joey Fatone didn't want to do the job, I think I could fill in for yeah. Joey Fatone. You guys kind of look alike. Do you think the rock star is dead? Uh, the mean, idea look, of the, the rock, rock star? This, yeah, I mean, people don't want the rock star anymore. People don't want a guy who's trash in hotel rooms, who's, who's, who's not drinking responsibly. Oh, word? Who's mm-hmm. like... Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know, nope. buddy. What do you think? You you do that pretty well, like yeah. You know, do you? I mean, you I get feel put like, in a corner. I get put in a corner. I'm not like it's not you, like. I think like I mean I get I'm popular, but I'm not like. I don't think you get put in a corner though. They, they they just like stereotype me like oh he's just like he bands won't let me open for them because they think our band's oh, yeah, too true. crazy that's or true. blah blah blah. It's like they'll put they th- you know they punish you for I doing this shit you now, dude. Though. That's you and me both, dog. Like, I know. The biscuits, yeah. They, they they wouldn't let us play Peach Festival because they they thought our our pe- our vibe was too crazy. Really? You know? And I was just I was like, what are you talking well, about? Yeah. We're we're huge in this area, and they're like, yeah, but this is a chilled out festival for you know it's more mellow and chilly and hanging. Oh. And, and he, I was like, okay, thanks. You know, like wh- why am I that guy? You know, why? why? But it's because we have this like kind of edge to what we do, right? And there's a lot of not edge out there today, which I, I don't know. Which don't, is, even, I, I, don't even get me started. What? Started with what? Millennium. Don't, don't, don't get, get me started with the fucking no edge, no spice. It's not even just it, music. It's just everything's like that now. I think we're just all on fucking, you know, we're all on fucking Xanax Social and shit. media leveled, everything, leveled everybody out and made everything too homogenous. And like everybody's lame now because of that. What do you think, Barber? 
I think everybody's on antidepressants. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Be Everybody. Depressed. Everyone's on Xanax or anti. That too. Back in the day, music was your antidepressant. Right. You know what I mean? Like, look at Nirvana. That stuff was like, I need antidepressants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like every single song. And we love them all, you know? Mm. And yeah. nowadays, people want like really good singing, mellifluously kind singing yeah. over either like it's very standard techno sound or maybe a song that sounds a little bit like Fish from the early 90s yeah. or something. And that's what people really like. And they also like, um, what's the other thing that people like? Um, I don't know. It just it just feels to me like, yeah. You heard it here first. I, don't I, get help if you're depressed. <laughs> ruining everything. Yeah, just take it, take Zoloft or something. Yeah. Just, yeah. No, but I mean, I, that stuff I, works, though. I got to give them credit. I, I know. Works. I, Xanax works. I, mean, <laughs> I also think it's like, you know, it's like the stigma of mental health is less now than it was back then. So, like... You, you, everyone really held in their their depression, their anxiety, because they didn't. They, it was like it felt more of a weakness. Now yeah, it feels yeah, like yeah. more like a power, powerful thing yeah, to and, accept your yeah, now, illness. Yeah, now you could make people like listen to your bullshit about your mental illness. When back in the day, you had to do the Nick Gerlach method yeah, and just hold it in, hold yeah. it in. Just uh. I'm an amazing musician. <laughs> <laughs> I, I explodes out of my horn every time I solo. You, you, you Barbara, you're kind of a suppressive dude. Like you hold your feelings in. How long did it take you to mourn your dad when he died? Well, it was weird. The weirdest thing happened after my dad died. So my dad used to listen to a lot of classical music and but he didn't spend that much time with me, but he listened to a lot of classical music. And I know a lot about classical music and listened to all of it because I used to, you know, be in the same house and I learned from him on all that stuff. And so I feel like part of my desire to be a musician is just based on wanting my own dad to like me and hang out with me. Right. You know, I was like, look, I do this thing that you love. You know what I mean? I do it good. I do this thing you love. Mm -hmm. And the, after he died, like a week later, I was like, oh, I don't need to make music anymore. Oh, shit. <laughs> it just like, it like left, there's something left mm. my face. Wow. When it, like two or three days later, I was like, oh, I don't I don't need to do any of this anymore. Hmm. And I had this moment that was uh, a cr I don't know how to explain it, except for it just like the desire to do what I do every day just left me. It just it flew away like fee and skyward sword. It was just like what what happened? It was really weird experience. I'd never, I, it was the only one I've ever had like that. Because maybe that it's was. because when you were first as a kid, you're doing, yeah, you're doing it to try to get his fucking attention. Mm -hmm. And now you don't have his attention because he's dead. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, it was shit. weird. So, and, and it just, back? did you call Mark Brownstein and say you quit again mm. right after that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't do that. I think I went to the studio that day and wrote a bagger, but, uh, what'd you write you know. about? What was the song about? In your head. That's gotta be heavy, dude. How do you that's I I would be so kind of like not suicidal, but if I had that idea of all this work doesn't matter anymore, mm. you've had a, a different situation where like when you had those feelings in your head, you just moved to programming or moved to blah blah blah. But it's gotta be a scary feeling to like the the baby that you nurtured, even if it was just for a split second, you're like, Oh shit, I don't I don't care as much right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was a literal. It was like a moment where where it was like somebody took like a, a light napkin and like rubbed it over my face for a minute, hmm. and and then I was like, oh, that's gone. And it wasn't like I was thinking about it. It just happened. Or I was just thinking about the finality of death and how he's not coming back. And now I need to do all the things for my mom that he was doing and make sure that she's okay and kind of fill the roles that he was, he did a lot of things for everyone in the family, very unsung. And now I need to kind of like inspector gadget, figure them out all the things that he did. So that thing, you know, and luckily we've been doing a good job of that, but like, it's a lot of stuff to figure out that he did and fill those roles and make sure that things don't fall apart. Right. And so like, I'm very concerned right now in life that like my family life could fall apart. And, and at the same time, you start like thinking about exactly what is it that 
is why you are who you are. You lose the person who makes you who you are. And you start thinking, do I have to become that person? Do I need to, like, do I need to mourn this person in, like, a major way? Like, do I need to cry for two days straight? I don't really know. And then it occurred to me just randomly, oh, I don't need to make music anymore ever again. And I was just like, wow. I didn't realize, like, I knew kind of it was connected because I've even said it before many times. But it, it was it was a, it was definitely a change there's a lot of things in my life that have changed. It's so amazing how we forget that we do things at first to just to try to get attention from our parents or our friends or our peers. So when right. that moment happens, it's like, oh fuck. I've been doing I've been on this path for so long and didn't realize that the path wasn't for you, it was for someone else. Yeah, it was. It literally was. I mean, I wonder if somebody's ever going to invent a drug where you take the drug and it changes what, uh, like, Design. nurture, oh. what nurture you got in your life, you know? Because like, yeah. this is a nurture thing, right? If I grew up with a different set of parents, I would probably have different thoughts altogether. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe this whole experience I've had since I was a little kid, which is probably why I started playing music so young. Is because yeah. like maybe I was using music as my way to communicate with my parents back when I was too young to communicate any other way, you know, right. and and so that's probably why I played instruments for so long. And I don't I don't know if they ever figured it out or not. That's what's crazy. It's like when I look at my kid, like everything that he does, I'm like, oh, he's probably doing it for this reason or that. Or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, yeah the, I was third kid, right? So the third kid, oh. you'd just be like, oh, he's still alive. Okay, let's move on with our day. You yeah, that's I mean? how I felt, too, with my parents. I was third kid, too, and my sisters were older than me, so it was like, I felt like I was just like, I kind of just did my things by myself because I felt like they just didn't really care about raising me. That was the oldest. Yeah. So opposite. Yeah, so you're the oldest, so you have to be tough and hold things yeah. in and be the uh, adult child. And then Barbara and I were sensitive little Sallies. Yeah, you, know? you guys were little baby girls, and I'm a strong, <laughs> proud alpha male. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to be as loud and as obnoxious as possible, or so no one else will you. notice that we're in the room. <laughs> right, right, right. What about, Barbara, what about, do you think that affected your the way you feel love from other people, like your bandmates? Maybe, uh, I don't know. Maybe. maybe. It's definitely changed me quite a bit. I, I feel the change happening. Um, what about like I don't before? Know, but, well, I, I, I'm three years into fatherhood, and that will change you. Let me tell yeah. you. That'll oh. change you. Um, what, is, what does it change? Well, I don't know. I, I like having a kid. So, And I, I know I see a lot of people that like having kids. So right. people who, if you can spend time with your kid, um, and like really enjoy their company, then I think you're in good shape for a really happy couple of years. And yeah, there's a lot of bullshit you have to deal with. They don't wipe their own butts. They, there's a lot of problems, but you gotta, if you can ignore all that and just enjoy what the rest of it has to offer, it's a really good, it's a great experience. But the interesting thing about having a kid that's very notable is if, like, you can regret stuff in life, right? You can right. regret this, you can regret that. And, you know, Jay-Z's always like, you got to live with regrets or whatever. And I always used to say that to myself when I was regretting, and I'd be like, well, you know, Jay-Z says it, blah, 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 right? And so... Uh, <laughs> and, but I love you how you're kid, quoting Drake and Jay-Z. I can have that in my bingo card for John Barber interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I listen to everybody. So... uh <laughs> So, but when you have your kid, your kid is a moment in time. He's literally a specific egg and a specific sperm that came together in a specific situation and became this specific. And chances are, if Mother Nature has her way, you're going to love your kid, right? right. And you're probably going to love your kid more than anything in the world because that's how Mother Nature cooks it up. Right. And your kid loves you. Your kid loves you. Right. You will never experience love. No, no girlfriend or boyfriend will ever love you like your child loves you and yeah. it's just crazy it's an, it's a crazy experience and so you you get in really? this like you know bromance i have a boy so we're in like a little bromance right and <laughs> if i was to change any of the wrong decisions that i did in my life any any wrong decision there was a time i was on a basketball court 
when I was 16 and, and I was playing with the varsity and they threw the ball to me and I had a three point shot to win and I bricked it. Right. And like that, I still think about that occasionally. Right. But if that was different, I wouldn't have river wouldn't be river. Right. And so my kid wouldn't be my kid. And so you can no longer regret anything that you did because then the the bromance that you're in with your child or whatever you want to call it changes because, and the kid, you know, disappears like in the movies, maybe you have a different kid, but the one that you have now that you love so much disappears like the movies, like, uh, you know, one of those Avengers. back to the future mm. type of things. So the, you can no longer regret anything in your past. Once you have a kid, you just have to accept it. And that is a big, big change for me as far as mental clarity and freedom of thought. So I don't have to think about anything I did 10 years ago anymore. I just basically raise my kid and enjoy my life. It's like an emotional butterfly effect or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like this. Exactly. I, I like this concept. I, the only thing I don't agree on it is how do you, how do you just not, how do you just stop thinking about your past? Like how, it just turns off once you have a kid. No, no, you think about your past, but instead of being like, oh, I wish I could have done that better, you just say, up, oh, if I did it better, I wouldn't have river. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All so I guess I'm fine with the way that it went. You know, yeah. you, you start looking at life as, you know, when, when, you, when you look at your past and you regret things, what you're doing is overweight analysis on the negatives. Right. You know, we played... As a band, the base we headlined a stage at the base of Mount Fuji in Japan in front of all Japanese people. I never re regret that, and I never pat myself on the back about that. I don't overweight that really, really, really positive experience. Right. But I'll think about like getting too drunk in Japan and spending like a few grand on some dumb alcohol that because I was too drunk to make a smart decision, and I'll Hold regret on, that. I'll regret that still, you know. But now I can't regret that because oops, wouldn't have my kid. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, like yeah, gotta yeah, yeah. gotta learn to take the good with the bad and weight them in an even fashion. So at least, and so you stop looking at the negative things in your past with such a strong magnifying glass. And you look at them as just things that got you to hear and things are good. You know what I mean? Did you, do you have that same perspective with the people in your band? Yes, I think so. I think yeah. that's maybe why things are going so well. Is that it's, it's not about anything anymore. It's just about playing music, having fun, being able to do this job. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's weird. We take it so fucking seriously. They're all dads too, right? Everyone's a dad in your band, yeah. right? Everybody's a dad in the band. It's a daddy band. Maybe that's why everybody had kids. They're all mellow now. The priorities, you know? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's it's uh it definitely changes perspective and perspective change is good. I wish I'd done it sooner. I wish I'd done it younger. Mm. And I wish my dad sat me down and asked, do you want to have kids? And he never did. He never bothered. And my mom used to be like, oh, you're young. You're young. I was like 42. And she was like, oh, <laughs> you're young. That's what my mom does, too. That my mom does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're, so, you're young. You're like, mom, I have a colonoscopy this week. <laughs> <laughs> but it's my third one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right, Barbara. Like, maybe, like, but with your, how your dad raised or how your dad showed you love, you know, you, you probably wouldn't have made an extra... If he would have gave you all that love, you wouldn't give this extra effort to your kid to be better as a parent. Well, that's definitely true. Yes, I'm trying to fix all the problems in my childhood with right. my kid. Like, I got no attention. I give him extra attention. I hang out with him too much. The <laughs> pandemic was actually a godsend in that category because mm -hmm. we spent the whole pandemic together playing video games, hanging out, like learning how to talk and walk and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. And I, 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 that was the best part of the pandemic for me. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is some, this is basically, it's, 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 it's I, I had one thought the other day that was interesting because I was like, why didn't my dad do this? Why didn't my dad do this? Why didn't my dad do this? And I remembered living in New York and walking around Brooklyn where I used to live and having the thought of why won't, my dad tell me these things and the differences, which I'd never realized till he was gone is I could have called him then and just asked him to tell me those things. Right. I could have called to him and asked him for all the advice that I was pissed that he never gave me. 
You know, I could have been a participant in the relationship on a level that I just wasn't. And I wasn't, for whatever stubborn, dumb reason that I wasn't a participant in the relationship, he wasn't paying attention to me, he didn't take me camping, he never threw a ball with me, whatever these dumb things are, but I still had the option to participate in the 30s. And when I was walking around New York, I had this thought, why can't I get some advice out of this guy? But I didn't call him and just ask him, can I please have some advice on this? And think, I think that's kind of like take me taking responsibility for my half of the dysfunctional relationship. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, it's like we, we in our stubborn way is like they're always our parents. So you don't feel like you ha- you're like ever a, an adult with your parent. You know, you still have <laughs> right. that fucking kid mentality. It's like they should be asking me how I feel, <laughs> not me asking <laughs> them how they feel. You know, I did, yeah. I did that with my parents. You know, I was pissed off they didn't come to... We didn't all didn't go to Japan. I was being very petty about it, but I didn't actually tell them that I felt bad. I just kind of like just suppressed it and moved on. You know, it's our it's a, it. The street goes both ways, and I think that's 100%. what you're and that's what you're teaching your kid too, right? I don't know if I can teach him anything. He's <laughs> he's stubborn as a mule. <laughs> yeah, but that's karma, bitch. That's karma, Barbara. That is straight up karma, dog. That's what they say. You, your parent, you ra- your parents raise you, and then you raise your parents. So the the thing isn't going away yeah. with River. I just have to like break through it, and you know, how's your relationship with your mom since your dad passed? Well, we've had a lot of conversations about her being in her like third era and stuff like that. We're trying to spin it in a way to get her to take some ownership of her day to day activities and her social life. And it's really hard. It's really hard to talk to a you know mid eighties or a yeah. late seventies, early eighties woman. I think she's in her sixties if you ask her. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I, you know, it's hard to like. I wish she would just go swim at the pool and play bridge. Yeah. And I can't get her to do either one of those two things. But she does do her own stuff. And so we'll see what she does, you know? We'll see what she does. I hope I can have, like, a like a hit single or something so I can just, like, send her to Europe with my niece and just, or, like, have her do, like, some cool grandma stuff, you know what I mean? How's, uh, yeah, I hear that. How's, uh, how's the other company doing? Are you guys going to sell? Oh, I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm, be- I'm living my life as if that stuff doesn't exist. You know what I mean? I'm just... I'm just trying to make the best music possible, and if they do stuff with those companies, then they do stuff. Look at you. Look at you. How, who, who the fuck is this man? I don't even recognize you anymore, <laughs> Barbara. You're just out here living the Buddha life, dude. <laughs> I mean, look. Yeah, I like, guess are you, so. Do you feel happier? So. Do you feel genuinely happier because you, you took all this weight off you? I think so. I think so. I think I think having a kid was the greatest thing. I, my wife, Lisa... Um, she basically is very pro child. I've been dating, I was dating women who weren't that pro child. Lisa was very pro child. And so we really, really got, um, after it a little bit, you know what I mean? (laughs) And then having a kid was just like literally the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. So I recommend it highly because it does boot you out a little bit. You've created life and you've passed yourself along to the next generation which take it alleviates like the word alleviate really means I reproduced. You know what I mean? That's that's what that word really means because it alleviates this whole thing that you have inside of you that you don't know that you have inside of you, which is thousands of generations of people who like dragged boulders up a mountain right. and and like gladiated and you know and cooked potatoes in a bucket with a rabbit in it right. you know for generations <laughs> so you could have this incredible life right and then when you have your child you realize that 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 vanishes and i, I and then you can hang out with your kid all day it's good it's a good what combo. about uh you guys i saw your tour schedule it looks like you're fucking really busy next year yeah, he's gonna hate me after yeah, this year. I'm, 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 if I can come on the podcast, we do an annual thing yeah, where every I come year. on every January. Yeah, we'll every January. Yeah, next next year, we'll be like, my life's in shambles. I don't know where. I'm my going, kid you know? doesn't know my name anymore. <laughs> my wife wants to divorce me. Yeah, they moved out. Yeah. They moved, my they moved mom out. wants in to a... move into the house. I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> Buying this cabin in Colorado was the dumbest <laughs> thing I ever did. Yeah, kids did hire me. <laughs> there, thanks for being honest with me. Finally. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, Barbara, we love you, brother. Keep it going and uh, keep the dream alive, pal. Love you. Awesome. You guys look great. Thanks for having me back. And uh, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get started on everything. <laughs>